welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a ring turn. This has probably been my most requested video by far, so finally got around to making it. This video is going to be divided into a few different parts. So first I'm going to show you guys the different kind of variations of ring turns, and then I'm going to get into some exercises and tips to help you guys get or improve your ring turn. And then I'm going to be going through each apparatus, showing you guys different manipulations you can do with each apparatus during your ring turn. So before we get started, I think it's important to be able to do a ring, scorpion, needle, whatever you call it, that position. So I have a specific tutorial on that. You can check it up here, I believe. I really hope I'm right. But yeah, once, you're, once you've got that down and you're ready to go, let's get started. So I want to start off by showing you guys a few different variations of the ring turn. The first one is going to be your classic ring turn where your top leg is bent and your bottom leg is straight. Or at least should be straight. Mine was a little bent. Then the second one is going to be with a bent top leg and a bent support leg. And this is the one that I have in my routines currently. The third variation is going to be where both your legs are straight, or again, should be straight. And the last one here is where your top leg is straight and your support leg is bent. You can try out all these variations when learning to do a ring turn and just see which one you like best. Okay, let's get into some exercises now. First off, you're going to come onto releve and bring one leg up into passe, then back into arabesque. and then back into passe again. I want you to try to stay on the same support leg the entire time and not to drop that top leg. Now this exercise isn't specific to your ring turn, but it can help with your balance in general. And I know it can be a little tricky to maintain your balance the entire time, <laughs> like I'm doing here, so you can definitely hold on to something in the beginning if you're finding that you're losing your balance. But make sure to try these on both sides, and you can repeat this a few times on each side, holding for about four counts in each position. Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is try to kick up directly into a ring position on high releve. Now this one is specific to your ring turn as we are coming directly up into this ring position. And again, this one is going to be on releve since your turn is obviously going to be on releve. But if you are finding that you're losing your balance right now, you can either grab onto a chair or start off on flat foot before you even raise onto releve. And this can give you something to work towards so you can eventually come straight onto releve. But just repeat this exercise a few times and you should be good to go for the next exercise, which is this quarter ring turn. So what you're basically going to do is prepare for your normal ring turn coming into fourth position and then come up into your ring position and whichever variation you choose. But the main difference here is that you're not gonna take the full power for your ring turn. You wanna focus on just holding the ring position, so you should only be completing about half a rotation. I know this seems kind of awkward, but it can help with your balance in this ring position while additionally helping you to prepare for the turn. And as always, don't forget to try out the other side. Here's me attempting and failing to do my left leg. <laughs> Okay, now let's get into the ring turn itself. So you're going to prepare the same way as we did for the quarter turns, but take the full force as you come up into your ring position, and you can try this out a few times on each side. I don't want to give a specific number because everyone's capabilities are different. For some, your back may get tired after just a few tries, while others can repeat this over and over again, so I think it's important to listen to your body, especially since ring turns can be tough on your back, and just do as many as you can without pushing into pain. Now some things to think about when you're doing your ring turn are to raise up onto a high releve. This is actually something that I still struggle with when I'm doing my ring turns, but believe me when I say that actually raising up onto high releve helps me tremendously. And that's actually why I started doing ring turn with a bent support leg, so that I can raise up onto a higher releve. One other thing is to think about pulling up during your ring turn. I know it can be tempting to sink down into the turn and rely on your flexibility, but I really want you to think about pulling up, almost as if you're raising towards the ceiling. Also, your top leg needs to be touching your head during a ring balance or a ring turn. 
It doesn't matter if it's the tips of your toes or the back of your calves, it just has to be touching your head at some point to avoid execution deductions. Now let's get into some different apparatus handling that you can do during your ring turn, and we're starting off with rope. So this is probably the most common one with rope, and it's just to have it behind your back. You can do this with an open rope like I'm doing here, or with the rope folded in half, which I will show in a second. Something else you can do is rotate the rope above your head during your ring turn. Now, I couldn't really figure out how to do this one, but I have seen many people do it before. And one more thing you can do that I think I've seen before is to wrap the rope around your support leg as you do the turn. So something like this, but obviously in a ring position. Okay. Um, Let's move on to hoop now. The first option is to pass through the hoop during the turn. Now if you're doing this on the right side like me, you'll step into the hoop with your right leg and holding it in your left hand and bring it to the left side during the preparation, and you'll come out of the hoop during the turn. And of course this will be the opposite if you're a lefty. Another option is to step inside the hoop again with your support leg and rotate it during the turn. This is what I do during my routine and it's actually a mastery. And the last one is to rotate the hoop on your top leg during the turn, but I believe this only works if your top leg is straight. Okay, moving on to ball now. The most common thing to do is to have the ball above your head, and this is what I have in my routine. You can also do this just with holding the ball out to the side, but make sure you're not letting the ball rest on your forearm when you're turning. I'm not the best example of this. This ain't a thing and I've been looking for a new one I keep on And one more thing you can do with the ball is to hold it in your back during the turn And I actually didn't know I could do this until I filmed the video Okay, up next we've got clubs And the first option here is to kind of trap one club between your arm and the other club And do the turn from there so this is what I have in my routine. Can you tell I was shocked by how good my turn was? Another option is to connect the clubs if you can, and then hold them behind your back during the turn, like we've done with ball and rope. Now you could probably do this with the clubs separated if you need to, but I think there's a higher risk of them falling out. And one more thing you could do with the clubs is possibly tapping them during the turn, although I think this one's pretty difficult since one hand is grabbing your leg, but also having to worry about tapping the clubs at the same time, but you can always give it a try if you want. And finally with ribbon, you can first do some circles above your head during the turn. This is the one that I have in my routine. Another popular manipulation is to do these spirals behind you during the turn. And one more thing is to kind of hold it between your arm and your neck. Sorry, holding the stick. These ones were kind of tricky to do in the space I have, but I hope this still gives you a good idea of some manipulation with ribbon and with all the other apparatus in general. And that's it. Great job. And that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any more questions about anything that I went over in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. But yeah, anyways, if you enjoyed, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe down below if you're not already. Also, don't forget to turn on my post notifications so you don't miss a new video. And I will see you guys next week with a brand new video. Bye!